Hello guys, welcome back to Barham Engines. I am Lee. So, I've been in the office most of today. Uh, you know I said a week or two back that we've got to rethink things and I've got to get somebody sort of either temporary or maybe permanently in the office. Um, today, is exactly the reason for that because I've spent most of the day in the office, most of the day speaking to people on the phone, most of the day dealing with paperwork, organising collection, delivery, all the rest of it and I haven't really got a great deal done out in the workshop so things have got to change definitely. Um, I did have a chat yesterday with a couple of customers that have had things sitting in our workshop for nearly a month, just over a month, which is very unlike us. We never normally work like that. To be honest, in the past, prior to about six months ago, um, we never had anything sitting there for more than a couple of weeks untouched. Um, but at the moment, definitely since Christmas, I don't know whether it's just because I've took on too much, um, found it difficult to take on, you know, not take on the work, but um, yeah, we've got ourselves into a little bit of a predicament now where I suppose in a way it's a good predicament. We've got 18, 19 engines, I suppose, in total out there, which is great. But like I said to you before, I'm the one that's got to be doing most of the machining out there, um, especially on the uh, specialist stuff. So can't do everything, got to sort something out, got to get someone in this office and help me out. I'm just going to do a vlog today on a particular issue we've got with an engine that we did. I don't know whether I did a video on this actually, I'll have to look back, but we did an engine for a gentleman on a, I think it's a 1930s Lagonda engine. Um, so this is a twin overhead cam, eight valve um, Lagonda engine, very special engine really for the day. I mean, it's a hell of a bit of kit for back in the day. Um, we basically, when we got the engine in, it would, I think it was smoking and knocking and what have you. When we actually got it, got in amongst it because we'd never seen one before and um, it turns out that everything on the engine was bespoke and um, the crankshaft the cam chain setup was mega bespoke um, the cams were different um, the head was different the I think the rods were specially made and all the rest of it different stroke it was a hell of a game it, it come with this weird sort of chain that we had to get remade in America and that was crazy money like sort of seven eight hundred pounds for a for a cam chain it was actually two chains um it had a, a dual tension set up um so yeah a lot went into that the customer has got three lagondas i do believe he bought another one recently and this particular one he's been doing the odd sort of hill climb and stuff like that on it um i think he's done two or three hill climbs so how it's been driven, I don't know. He's not really had any problems with it. It's a bit noisy because of the chain setup, but then it's non-standard, nothing you can do about that. Um, but the actual engine was fine. Anyway, we're in a little bit of a predicament because we had a phone call from him um, a couple of days ago. <laughs> He's, it all come to a grinding halt, had a bit of a rattle, he said, um, and then just stopped. And he's had a mechanic sort of briefly have a look at it. And he said that the bottom end turns over off the key, but the cams and the chain don't move at all. They've had the rocker cover off, they don't move. So at this point, we're suspecting either a bottom pulley is let go, keyways let go or something like that, or the, ch the chain seems all tensioned, or he's got a broken crankshaft or something like that. So at this stage, we do not know. Um, I spoke to him yesterday and as nice as the gentleman is, and he's been very reasonable about it, it's, um, he, he hasn't really, he doesn't really understand anything mechanical like that, um, which is fine. And so I sort of tried to explain to him what may be the causes. Um, the predicament we've got at this stage is, it's a very lengthy job to get in amongst that engine. It's one of those engines that you've got to take. Sorry about that. John's just um, interrupted us. So yeah, he's not really mechanically minded like that. I've tried to sort of 
explain to him what the causes could be. Um, but basically, he's been in touch. I, I don't know whether he's sort of half expecting a bit of a warranty job, but it's very difficult sometimes because he's rang us up literally two weeks before um, a whole year since we invoiced it. Um, which on a normal reconditioned engine would be, there'd be a year's warranty on it. Um, but this isn't your everyday sort of recon. Um, you do try and explain that to them at the beginning, but you know, sometimes it whoosh, or in and out. Um, it's a very specialist engine. It's been used for sort of motorsport use. And I know, a I know what a lot of you are going to say at the end of the day, it's a competition engine or it's, completely non-standard warranties void which you are right um, but again I've done these vlogs before and um, it's we don't like to work like that <laughs> um, we sort of suppose it leaves us open a little bit you we have started to sort of stick to the you know the small print and, and the fact that it is competition and non-standard and what have you um, so, yeah, I, as I say, I've tried to subtly sort of explain that to him, but at this stage, I don't really like being blunt about it. And um, so I said, what we're going to do is when we've got time, which certainly isn't yet, um, we cannot get it in the workshop. We're probably going to have to have Stuart and Pete look at it over the road there at Alpha Ragazzi and maybe just whether we have to get the engine out. I've said to him, look, subtly we'll get the we'll get the motor in here um or get the car over there i'll have a look at it um but you could be looking at some major um some major remanufacturing here because you know as i say nothing's standard if it's done any damage to the chain you're talking hundreds if it's broke the crank there's a bespoke crank you're looking at a couple of thousand quid there and the time you know um of course he didn't want to hear that he's got all these sort of track days and sprints and what have you booked and what have you but yeah it's a difficult one for us really because you know we don't just like to um we don't work like a general reconditioners we sort of work like a you know what we are an independent sort of we like to have good communication between our customers and our and ourselves so yeah a bit of a difficult one really um i don't like phone calls like that um like a lot of you guys are going to say we have got to sort of stick to the small print and um you know you cannot warrant motorsport stuff and non-standard stuff it's a complete unknown um as i say we we obviously checked the crankshaft and i think we I don't know whether we ground the crank and it was bespoke crank bearings shell bearings and all the rest of it you know we don't know we don't even know whether it's going to work. We don't. We don't even. We haven't even seen an original crankshaft, so haven't got a clue. You know, they've only got to, I suppose, grind a radius or or machine a radius or something like that wrong, and the thing you've got a weak spot there. It doesn't matter how thick the crank is. So yeah, very um, bit of a nightmare that guys. And um, as I say, we've got we've got a car in with Stuart at the moment, a, a Jaguar V8 supercharged, which he's taking the cylinder heads off. It's a suspected head gasket on one side, um, but we're gonna do both the heads. It's about 18 hours on auto data to take the heads off, or one head off, which means you've got supercharger, engine out, all the rest of it. And they give about another three hours just to do the other heads. So I said, listen, may as well just do both the heads. So they're doing our donkey work for us. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're gonna do the heads. As soon as that job's done, we have got a Volkswagen Golf TFSI uh, 66, uh, 66 plate, which isn't very old. Um, that's booked in next for engine out, complete engine overhaul, suspected melted piston. And then the Lagonda is going in after that. So um, yeah, look out for that, guys. Um, don't like to just tell people to jog on, but it's one of those really. They Everyone just sort of seems to let it go in here out there at the beginning don't really read the invoice or the, the disclaimer on the website um and seems to think that there's just a year's warranty on everything you know um no matter what it is but no uh, you can't you just can't do it people like ourselves just cannot do that so we'll see what comes of that um but 
thank you very much for watching guys and um, until another video take care mm -hmm.